Oh, the Soviets and Soviets of the Red Army, how you all doing? This is Colin Ulrich. And I'm Rang Roo, hello, hello, hello. And folks, we are looking over here at Chedron for another matchup for the Burning Baltics tournament. Rang, tell us about the victors here. Or the victims, on if left you prefer. <laughs> Left-hand side in the blue, we have Idris, Blaine, as 11th of SS. We have a Maverick income. Right hand side in the red, we have Paulus playing uh, group Fedjunking with a Vanguard income. So Nordland, I believe this actually is the first time we're seeing them. Um, what do we know about them? What's the kind of deal? Uh, another German SS uh, mechanized division. They've got the armored cars, they've got a decent amount of tanks, decent amount of AT. There's a rather well balanced division overall, mainly focusing in a lot of infantry. And then we've seen Fajunkin before, which is pretty, we've been pretty mediocre last time we've seen them, so maybe Paulus can pilot them a bit better. But just looking up north, it is getting really hot with the Flam and Rafa charges and a whole lot of armored cars. It certainly does seem to be that way, doesn't it? It's a hot time in the old town tonight, I will say that. Down yeah, to the yeah. south, though, not much better. I mean, that, that hillside is just always just a giant mess. And I feel like we're going to have that one of those weird kind of things where each force's left flank is going to see greater success than their right. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna just like trade flanks essentially. Exactly. It's always such a classic maneuver. Exactly. And it becomes a rush into who can push whose flank the fastest. You know, you laugh, but at the same time, I can definitely see that happening here. I think what I am not so much fascinated by, but looking over here to the north and looking back down here to the south, if I am the Nordland division, I'm worried about my Sudland right now. <laughs> Again, well, they're, they're the Nordland. They have to play in the north, you know. That's <laughs> true. The top tip, guys, if you ever face Nordland. They're always going to go north. So just make sure you have blue left and red right and they'll always be attacking the top of the map. So just change your perspective and you'll win the day. Yeah. 100% guaranteed this is a tip from uh, Khan and Rang. No, 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 this is just, just from Rang. Khan's here, but it's just from Rang. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's an asterisk, not responsible for your win-loss record on this. Uh, yeah. 231 to the north, definitely engaging a lot of these stroke DTs as they're coming on in. And these guys, again, like over here on Tuesday, weirdly enough, the Germans have an on-paper infantry advantage. Mm-hmm. And even then, quality-wise, I might even argue they have an advantage in quality as well. Yeah, they got all the Panzergrundeers recently. Some of the Panzergrundeers are grouped with MG-26s, which is... And also MP-28s. Like, so some of them are definitely making do with what they got, but still. I mean, yeah, those ones are only 20 points, to be fair, so... They're not that yeah, bad. But yeah, they definitely have the infantry planted. Fedjun King... Has like all right infantry. The Stroke DTs are one of their main gimmicks, and I, f I find them to be pretty underwhelming just due to their small squad size, even though they have a rather beefy machine gun. Yep, that DT is certainly pretty darn good. I mean, 750 meters is nothing to laugh at either, and having that increased kind of minor utility with the Molotov cocktails is nothing bad. Yeah, but they just don't have the survivability, unfortunately, compared to your 10 or 12 man infantry squads to really survive long enough to get all that firepower on the field. But yeah, Paul is definitely trying to, you know, utilize, you know, the few tanks that he has early on those Shermans and T-34s to try and deal with the mechanized play. And the thing is, is that if he takes out like he did already a Puma or two, that's a hefty kick in the cojones for Iadris. So I, yeah. I, I don't know if I just, it just has to kind of last over here until B, do we get those Panthers, or if he's just going to kind of roll over. Yeah, it definitely seems like, I mean, with his Maverick income, it's going to be another one of those matches. Or also, Paulus is playing Vanguard, so, I mean, both sides are wanting to win in the first 20 minutes. So if it goes to C phase, the income difference is really not that much of a of a pain in the ass, but right now in these first 10 minutes it's really down to Paulus to make the plays happen. Interesting with this Stug in the south who is in a rather lousy position. Yeah. He could have even shut down this minor armored push from the Emtra and the T-3485, uh, but it looks like he's looking to rectify that right now. 
No, okay, well, a P26 oh. might have a, a, something to say, get said here as well. There we go, I think. Oh yeah, so I got the eyes on on the Sherman at least, because it moved up the hill. Uh, it's not going to the stabilizers though, man, the stabilizers. I'm not going to say him this time, yo. Thunk for getting that snipe. I do like how Paulus is going to be pushing onto the other hill position in the center. Just as some channels, but hey, it works. There's not a whole lot of infantry in there right now to worry about. Well, by the same token, we are going to see MG26 Pegrens shifting forwards. they got to get out of that stinking truck, though, before they get 86 by 76-2, and it's going to happen. Yeah, that hurts. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah, the northern position from Paulus has definitely stabilized a little bit after getting thoroughly kicked out of the town. He has, he does have a bit of a foothold in it at least, which is all important. But if you get fully kicked out, you, you're not going to be able to uh, move back in easily, so to speak. But yeah, it's just mainly focused on the Chernos and Strokies, which... We'll see how it have to do. I mean, the, he, he's just fighting against the spam of Panzer Grenadier MG 26 ers which are also pretty... Mediocre. This certainly will be the case in that, yep, there we go, and that, that half-track that was holding a hefty amount of territory in the center goes down. Yeah. Uh, now, a dual Stug in the south, T-3045 is kind of aggressing ever so slightly. He might be able to see the Stug. No, Stug backs off just in time. Yeah. And yeah, features can just get his good armature reach, so down south that's not happening, he does lose one stuck, and it feels like he's gonna lose the second here. I mean, both sides don't really have a whole lot of tanks at their disposal, really, so they want to be a little bit cautious in how they trade with armor. The oh, we got the auto! Oh. That's the uh, jet plane. You can hear that scream, oh man. I know. It's so weird seeing a, a, a jet plane, it's such magical technology. It brings me back to war game. <laughs> yeah. It's not that fast, I believe. I no. believe, like, like, the fastest one goes, like, 600 kilometers an hour. Which I believe some planes do go faster than that, so it's not... It's not the Wunderwappen technology that you'd think it is. It was actually, I think it was still an early model of it, though, too. So this is not, yeah. this is not the turboprop going through the center of the nose. This is the junk on the sides here. ME-109 kind of overflying this hop here. Not entirely sure why he's still He's spotting. He's recon. Yeah, but when was the last time we saw a recon playing and actually get used to a recon? <laughs> That's true. This is, a, this is an oddity, but he is actually... Well, he's trying to chase down the Ak-19 now, but he should have good eyes on, on what's up north, which is a whole lot of Shermans and a whole lot of Chernos. And the question really is whether he can churn out them into paste. Um, <laughs> if we get to phase B, and we're going to gloss over that horrible joke... If, if we get to phase B, we actually have the potential to see a Stuka Sofus, which is awesome because the last time I saw one of those, I was still commanding, you know, co uh, Company of Hero 2 troops. Don't oh, God, get to see them very a often. Support tab. Oh, yeah, it's and in it support tab. Fire. That, is, that is an interesting choice. I'd think I'd be an artillery unit, but I believe that has the, like, gun count. I don't know. But yeah, it is the Company of Heroes thing that ruins your day. It is awful to get hit by and awesome to play as. So the question is really yeah. which side of the fence you're on. Mm -hmm. If you're American infantry blob, you're not going to be happy. Heck, even if you're the Soviets, and that's your shock troops are going to get pasted hard. Yeah. But yeah, the town fight is looking a little bit better here from Paul. So Strokey's in close range and the Molotovs and lots of Chikushi weaponry you can do pretty well against the Panzer Grenadier Squad. We also have these Sweden Sugs, which I believe are Swedish volunteers, and they are a recon, but they're very well equipped. Yes, you are correct. Um, interesting thing, actually, we were discovering just in the kind of divisional history overall, the Northern Division is a kind of a, a offshoot of the Viking Division. Um, really interesting formation kind of idea, and, then, and I guess to cut short here, as the Stroke DTs are moving in to light the fire of these MG-26 P Grunts, and they do rather well. They really do rather well, but the Schweden Zugs, what would you say, these are basically about Fusiliers, aren't they? Yeah, they're pretty much like Fusiliers. 
both the SVTs, which is also quite nice, and the PP Shars. Oh, yeah, you're right. Jeez, I didn't even see those yeah. PP Shars. Yeah, that's like a not, a not bad unit at all. And Portis is, yeah, he's making pretty good progress pushing back into his town. Like, he could definitely make his work if he keeps his uh, Shermans alive and just bring in a little bit more infantry to get fire support. Because if. It, if. if. Oh, we got uh, two Yunkers being brought in up north as well as another recon plane. I mean, these Yunkers are pretty heavy payload, so could potentially see a dead tank. There's still a Yak-90, though, who's going to he's gonna definitely get to the first Yunkers. He's going he's gonna to go down. Yep. Yeah. Other one's going to step into an attack run. He's probably going to pace the wrong neighborhood here, but... Oh, wow. Yeah. A I little am... bit overkill for one stroke of DT, but it's going to save his butt for now and uh, stop that push. It certainly is. And there's a pack 40 who's up to the north on, on efficient shot, I believe, so yeah, I'm not going to worry too much about that. Down to the south, um, like I said, this hillside is thoroughly bleeding. Yeah, Paulus is doing really well in this match. I mean, it's 15-9. And he doesn't even have the income advantage. He's actually down by income quite a bit. But just the position of the southern hill, as well as the central hill position. And it's really just Chernos and Maxim's holding it. He's doing great. I wonder, like, I was wondering what, what Idris has been doing. Because it seems like he doesn't have a whole lot on the field. But he's getting a panther out. But he doesn't have anything else to really support it. And therein lies the rub, doesn't it? Is that... Yeah. Whenever you go behind, there's that, that awful, awful feeling where you think to yourself, okay, what do I do to get back in this? Do I get foot troops? Do I set up a base of fire and try to move underneath with support? Like, what's the deal? And I guess it really kind of depends on who you're fighting against. Against this particular division right here, this, you know, Fedekin, um, or I'm never going to say this right, uh, Fedukin, um, I feel like you've got to be up in their face. You've got to be aggressive. You can't depend on these kind of, like, single blocks though with these tanks these tanks are not going to be the, the efficient kind of game winners for you yeah i mean he definitely lost out pretty early on with those tank engagements with his thugs against all the armor but mm -hmm. now on his southern side i don't really feel like he's going to be able to get in here fedjukin has a lot of anti-tank we are seeing the 100 millimeter anti-tank gun being brought in so if i can get eyes onto the panther there's not going to be a panther Okay, so a quick thing, by the way, so uh, the AR-234, the B-2, 560 yeah. kilogram, uh, kilometers per hour. So 560. Yeah, not that fast. Because I believe it's the, uh, yeah, it's the heavier loadout one. I think it's the lighter loadout one, which does go 600, but, um, yeah. It is very cheap here, if I recall. Uh, what is it? 180, no, 130? Oh, yeah, okay, never mind. I, I believe I was thinking, like, uh, before. Well, then like, you gotta worry the, about uh, all the ball alpha. bearings, and you gotta worry about putting all the bombs in the pickle barrel and things like that, yeah. and it's just... It's and, like, changing the engine after 10 hours of use. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Do you really want to rebuild that transmission? I know I don't. <laughs> uh, Pioneers, in the meantime, going after the Chernos over here on this middle hillside, and this is where the Chernos become a bit of a liability. Because Pioneers should never lose, even in a you know uphill battle, no pun intended, against superior numbers of Chernos. Yeah. And they are doing pretty well. Well, squad after squad getting sent away packing, and I think it's just the attritional fight might be the only thing that can save him here. Yeah, just hordes and hordes of Chernos, so... I mean, hopefully, Force of Pioneers run out of uh, bundle grenades, but they do have quite a few. Well, to the north, the Cherno push is getting getting rocked pretty hard. The Schwittenzug, mm -hmm. the Pioneers, heck, even the Pioneer Fuhrer, um, not really having the hardest time seeing these guys off. I... I can't help but feel there needs to be a commissar or two, you know, reinforce that loyalty to the Emperor. Um, just kind of stiffen their backs a bit. Like, I'm really surprised by how easily this push can get reversed. Yeah, if the MG-26 Pentagon is all going down, uh, actually forcing to resupply his front line with pioneers and that's your good infantry is stopping the Chernos in their track. As you can see, when you actually equip your German infantry with German machine guns, 
You just can't get close to him. You just get pinned down immediately. Yep. Yeah. And we're seeing Panthers finally being brought in, which is definitely going to give some of that long range firepower which Idris needs. I don't know if that Southern Run is really going to prove to be all that real just due to the heavy amount of anti tank on that Southern Hill. But the Northern Run, if you can maybe flank around a bit up north and try to engage some T-34s and armor from that position, he could be in a pretty good position to try and knock out Paulus's armor in general. No, interestingly enough, we did see just now that the Pioneers and the Kidney Hills um, barely making it through. I mean, almost almost out of ammunition, actually, which is kind of funny. Um, and maybe probably the closest we ever got to an actual World War II Soviet-style human wave attack. <laughs> <laughs> it was just horde and horde of Chernobyl. But they all just kind of attacked... Uh, it seems like they attacked one by one rather than one massive horde in a, in, in a, in a combined attack, because then you could wait for the first grenade throw to happen. Then you have a little bit of time to just put down a lot of river and fire to knock him out. And oh, the Panther up north does go down. Yes, it does. Uh, yeah, the, just the overwhelming Soviet anti-tank firepower will be enough to blow up that kitty here. You are seeing some SK-18s being brought in for some definitely needed long-range artillery firepower. He's going to need to use them to knock out his anti-tank gun. I have certainly lost the... Oh, the SK-18s are to the south. Okay, I was looking up to the north and I was like, yeah. where the devil are they? Um... Yes, but you know what? The reason that the Sharonos came in multiple waves is because, you know, when the one with the rifle gets killed, the one behind him picks up the rifle and shoots. So that was the problem. <laughs> uh, and we also have that needle-nosed uh, BS-3 down to the south. We actually don't see this guy very often either. Oh, the, um... Yeah, it's a new unit exclusive to Fedjunkin. We didn't see him last time. We saw Fedjunkin play, but it is the most powerful Soviet anti-tank gun you can get. With a 200 armor pen, I can't imagine how you could say that. Yeah, yeah. Also, it could be used as a as a field gun, like with this is free. You know, it's not that great of an indirect fire gun. And I do like how the Soviets essentially made the majority of their anti-tank guns also have to be used as an artillery gun. Was it necessity makes? I don't know, what's the I forget the actual term for. Good lord. Um, oh, that's the worst feeling. Oh. The worst feeling when you when you're um ground attack planes like ah you know what I think I'll go for a bombing no never mind I'm out no dude you are in the bombing run um and he's gonna, he's gonna pay for it as well IL two being timed perfectly to allow the intercept um might be two kills two kills it's definitely gonna be two kills deflection shots like being oh where did he that was a weird okay there we go all right um. It was the worst feeling in the world when you have your guy, he's in his bombing run, he's in his dive, and he pulls out of it. Dude, you're yeah. halfway there. That's like the annoying thing with the Stukas. It's like the pro is like, yeah, they're super accurate when they drop their bombs, but when there's actual anti aircraft on the field, it can be very difficult, especially in later stages of the match, to get those bombs off. You risk sometimes they just do like a regular dive attack instead of doing the fancy loop to loop. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, Stukos of Fus, by the way, in the north, and I kind of forgot that they added in the 75 short gun on it. Yeah, it's, you definitely think it's a little bit overkill, you know? It's like, we already have these massive rockets on the side. Do we really need another gun? And the artillery park, yeah. by the way, gets hit by the IL-2, so that's one SK-18 down. Yeah. But Northland definitely has some very interesting units with the Panzergrunder MG-26s, the Stukafus, the, the jet bombers. They're a very unique division just in terms of their equipment loadout. I do think, though, that you need to kind of formulate and group up your thought process on, uh, process on it, because I can see people getting a lot of very muddled ideas about this division. Do I want yeah. to play it as a purely armored division? Do I want to play it as a purely infantry division? I think you have a lot of play to allow both and multiple you know, different fighting styles, but you have to understand going into it what your goal is. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree because you can definitely it's, it's definitely a little bit you can do what you want with it. It does have pretty good infantry and yeah, and the town fight is going pretty all right for him. He does have a whole lot of pentagon deers. It's just getting into position. I think what's really been screwing over Idris this match is mainly the armor engagements, as he hasn't been getting on top of that 
and Paulus has been able to, I mean, he doesn't have a whole lot of armor either, but his Shermans are still alive, and they're in the sea phase now. And he still has ISUs available, and SUs available to him as well, as well as anti-tank, so he is doing pretty well. Just a quick thing in the meantime, so, um, the jet aircraft comes in, and now that Ridge on the south is a, just about a few meters smaller because that thing's gonna hit again. No AT assets on it anymore, anything bigger than a couple PTRDs. Yeah. Um, Superior is now moving in and very successfully going to engage the Western Kidney Hill. Pioneer of Fear are not gonna be able to deal with three squads of Superiors, no more that Pigran out in the open, so that's not gonna be very good. Mm hmm. But I think Idris does have a good opportunity in retaking this hill. If he can capture that hill, he could potentially resecure the Kidney Hill area. And that's a whole lot. This is really where he's losing a lot of his points. So this would really be his main uh, focus, of con focus of concern. I agree. And that's what he's doing. He's bringing in the whole horde of Panzer Grenadiers. So a but... quick thing. Stugas of Fus, it is now firing in the north. Prepare to fire. And here we go. So we have the Werfkrupper uh, Flammen shells. Actually, I don't yeah. remember how to say the, the rest of that part there, but I am super excited. We have four shells going in already. Five, six. Six. Please be, be beautiful, because this is now the first time I get to see this guy in action. And, oh my gosh, short round. <laughs> but he, I think he killed the Nemcha, so you know what? That's yeah. that's pretty impressive on the Maiden Fire thing here. Yeah, um, there, so you're right. So the MG26 is going to get shot to pieces as the T3045 is on this hillside. And with Stroke, he's moving in the flank, newly arrived. This is going to get bad very, very quickly. Yeah. Yeah, Stroke, he's definitely going to... That was sort of the artillery pinning down some of his troops, yeah. I mean, we do have the Stug in the town, doesn't have the veterinary bonus, but... I mean, it's more of a chance that he's going to get blown up compared to the Russian armored forces. And he just cheated himself out of the kill on a T3045 by dropping 81 mil smoke on it. Oh. That is so unfortunate. He's not going to get up the hillside, I don't think. Oh, wow. No, Superior's backing off to allow him to do that. That is a unique call there. Mm hmm. Of course, and he's on the hill. Oh, he's like right. pushing through. But it's a lot of strokeys. No, strokeys are pretty even maps against those MG26. Panzer Grenadiers. Well, and, and, and like Anakin should ground. know, they have the high ground. It's over. Yeah. But yeah, Idris not doing too great in terms of points. He only has two minutes left. It does feel like he does have an opportunity. Like, he's very close on the tip to getting, you know, his kidney heals back and at least neutralizing the points bleed at least, but... I don't feel like he has enough time. If he had a few more minutes, maybe, but even then Paulus is, you know, clapping in right now. Reviews IR2s to bomb the infantry pushing up. And that's all three. Oh, jeez, two dead and one forced into retreat. Jeez, yeah. Louise. Up to the north in the meantime, a research and push over here out of Paulus is, I think, very much going to shut down the attempted... German shove as more strokes just get poured in and I thought the Germans were supposed to have a numbers advantage here but it does not seem to feel like it whenever I look at the infantry fights no it's definitely been a lo little bit like cluster in that regard like you feel like you'd have a little bit more in this town to try and stop against a horde of strokey but I think it's really just the armor that's been slowly picking off infantry squadron by one we do have the panther here helping out but it's not gonna do a a whole lot in this town fight. Stug does go down, and yeah, the stroke here pretty easily can just finish off the rest of German infantry here. Yep, with you know the PP shots, the DPs, the most, even the most in the guns. Yeah, that Panther is good, but he's gonna run out of HE sooner than there's gonna be running out of Soviet bodies, so. Yeah. Now, down south, he does manage to secure the kidney heals, which slows down the bleeding a bit, but still. I mean, that northern area, I don't feel like he's going to be able to get back anytime soon. And it's just going to be a huge uh, flag loss, so to speak. 
Here we go, he is down to 9.15, only a minute left on the clock. I felt the JU-87, it's like, okay, you know that the anti-air gun is there, can you please just take it out? He yes. got the bombs off, at least. Yeah, I'm stunned by that, I am truly stunned by that, and clearly the, those guys were too. Yeah, but, um, that's just gonna clear it out for the Pantagon days to move up, at least. And, and little Katya actually speaks to the north, she's throwing down 82 mil rockets. Mm -hmm. So I think we did miss another barrage, or a nice, rather perfectly formed round from some kind of German artillery. I couldn't tell you what the heck that is. Katyusha, in the meantime, jeez, I always forget that she can fire all of 48 of those rockets. Yeah. She does not stop talking, I swear. It's constant. Ryan, we gotta get you to meet some other women, man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's because it's always the Russians. <laughs> stop, stop mail ordering your girlfriends and we'll talk. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. That's that's been the problem. I've been trying many different websites, but um, At that they end up always leaving and going back. <laughs> oh like, man, that's passports here, but no, they just can't just can't stand me. But anyway, <laughs> that is that is a, that is a, a, a rant for talk. another another post. <laughs> I can't talk. Oh but my anyway, that was gosh. really close and kill was only a 200 difference, yeah. But bizarrely enough, like, that one didn't feel even. It didn't. Like, Paulus had a re really good map control in that matchup, and it felt like he was killing a bunch. Like, yeah, like, much more. I think like, maybe because he was killing a lot more infantry. Yeah, it's true. Those Pantagon ideas are, like, the, the MG26 runs. Mm -hmm. Oh, pretty cheap. But even then, he knocked out like a few Panthers and Stugs as well. So I'm curious to see on the losses side what actually went down. So it, it's... From the losses side, the jet aircraft paid for himself, shockingly enough. Wow. Um, Stukas Afus got the, the Sherman kill, so hey, who cares? He's fine. Um, at least in my book. I know, I know yeah. it's only half his cost, but whatever. Yeah. Kills, not... Too much, really. Again, like, I'm really, really stunned that this ended up being a victory for him where he went up in kills. Like, I feel like that was a... I don't even know the right term. I don't know the right term. Yeah, I, once again, I felt like that match really went in the pool as his favor because he was getting those very efficient armor trades against Idris, especially early on. Yes. And managed to secure all the high ground positions down south. Especially getting those kidney heals so easily, that really scored my easy plus two, or plus two point advantage, so to speak, throughout that match and get that quick victory. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, I, like you said before, I can't wait to see what the heck is going to be going on here in the near future as people start to really see what these divisions can do. Mm hmm. I'm, I'm hoping to see more, we see more of these divisions a bit more in the league. Maybe, I mean, the last time we've seen Fedjuk and I thought they were pretty bad, but after seeing this sort of gameplay, if you can do efficient trades with your early tanks, I mean, the infantry is not terrible per se, and the, the heavy anti-tank is a rather nice benefit to Fedjuking. And the air power, like, they, they do have stuff going for them, is what I'm trying to say. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but folks, that's going to do it for us, I believe. As always, um, if you have any kind of thoughts you want to add into the conversation, please definitely go for it down below. Uh, and until, I guess, next week and next time, I'm Connell Work. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.